Hello, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're going to go over alcohol reactions. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a long video. There's a lot of reactions that we have to cover, but again, the good news, just like with the introduction, there's really not much new here. It's a lot of review. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I want to point out is this general introduction about how alcohols react. So let's consider right here an alcohol. Now remember, alcohols are sp3, right? So they have to have sp3 carbons that hold them. Now remember that this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon. And I want you to consider a few things. First off, alcohols can act as acids. So we can do acid-base type reactions. Also, alcohols have lone pairs, so they can act as bases. So sometimes they'll get protonated, other times they will protonate, right? So they have acid-base characteristic. Another thing is that they can go through substitution. So alcohols have a leaving group. They are a leaving group, actually. So the OH could be considered a leaving group, not by itself, but we could do things to make it a leaving group, and we'll learn about how to do that in just a few. And finally, it can go through elimination. So we can take an alcohol and make it into an alkene, and that would be elimination. So as you can see, from this one alcohol, we have so many different possible scenarios. And now we're going to go through each and every one of them one by one. So let's get started by talking about acidity. Now, the first thing that you should know is that a pK of an alcohol is around 16, right? So in order for it to be considered an acid with pK of 16, then that means that whatever is on the other side, when this becomes an alk oxide and you have another acid, that that acid must be a larger number than 16, right? So this must be greater than 16. And so there's only a few examples of this. It doesn't really react as an acid with many things. One most common example is if you have, let's say, a carbon that's negative. So if I have A minus, I'll do it generically, then this becomes HA, and we have to make sure it's greater than 16. So for A minus, it could be a carbon, but what it does, it just pulls off the H, and this becomes negative. So A minus could be the following things. It could be a carbon, like a R, that's negative. Now, usually that's with a metal next to it, like methyl lithium is an example of that or you could have alkenes or alkynes, right? So we can have an alkene that's negative or even an alkyne that's negative. And they all become acids that are higher or greater value than 16, okay? Now, another one is NH2. This is a good base. It becomes NH3 when it gets protonated. So this right here is a base. I'm not gonna write the NH3. I don't wanna throw you off. These are the bases that we can use. H minus or NaH, same thing, right? A lot of times when things are negative, you have a metal to disguise its negativity. It counters it. So NaH or LiR or NaNH2, these are things that will get protonated by an alcohol because they're all pKa value. The conjugate acid of these are higher values, higher pKa's than alcohol itself. So these are the most common ones. And they're, they're, th this really comes down to the most important ones for you. So just keep in mind, any carbon, right? Well, other than like, for example, CN, that's not going to be an acid-base reaction with an alcohol. It won't be a base with an alcohol, okay? But carbons that are not positive, meaning they don't have like electronegative groups next to it. So things like uh, carbons, like sp3 carbons, sp2 carbon, sp carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Those are the ones you should keep in mind. Now, also, alcohols can act as bases or nucleophiles. So when we talk about nucleophile, we'll write A for nucleophiles. Remember, the nucleophile, what that simply means is that you have an oxygen. Usually it's negative, but it doesn't have to be. If an oxygen is negative and it's, gonna it's not going to grab a proton, instead it's going to attach onto something that has a leaving group, then it's a nucleophile, right? So remember, nucleophile is a kinetic term. It's more about the rate, the speed, not so much stability, whereas base is a thermodynamic term, 
right? That's more about stability. In our case, we're going to talk about nucleophile. So if you have an oxygen as a nucleophile, if it's negative, if this is negative, then SN2 is favored for substitution. And so how do we do that? Well, the R group must be equal to either methyl or primary. And then the oxygen will act as a nucleophile. So what we can do is, for example, we can have a neutral alcohol and we use a base like NaH, for example, to pull off the H from the alcohol. And then it acts as a nucleophile, goes after something. So in our case, we can have it go after, let's say, methyl bromide. So then that would come in, SN2, this leaves, and you're done. You get to this right here. Now, if it was higher than primary, then it's probably not going to go through SN2. It's going to go through E2, right? So that's why we kind of keep it at methyl primary for the alcohol halide side. Now, of course, the halogen could be Br, Cl, I, F, any of the halogens that we've talked about all semester long. Now, another possibility is where we have an alcohol and we don't make it negative. We leave it neutral, and in that case, we want to go through an SN1 reaction. So when it's neutral, then it's favoring SN1. If it's negative, it favors SN2, not SN1. Now, with SN1, the R group should equal tertiary or secondary. Now, if we have, for example, whoops, If we have, for example, a tertiary alkyl bromide, then this is going to go and attach on to the tertiary carbon, like that. And that would be SN2, uh, sorry, SN1. So what's happening here? The Br is leaving, carbocations forming, and then oxygen's coming in. I'm not going to go through the full detailed mechanism. We've seen this mechanism many times. So I just want to give you the general overview. Now, another one that actually favors both allyl is going to favor both SN1 and SN2. Okay, so it depends on the degree of the allyl. So, for example, if I have an alcohol and I treat it with, let's say, an allyl and then it has like a BR right there, well, then this right here is going to go through SN1. The reason why I say that is because the alcohol is neutral, right? It's not negative. So that tells me SN1 is favored over SN2. And the fact that this is actually, let me make it primary so I can make my point. So this is a primary, which normally you would think is SN2 for primary, right? But the fact that there's, it's not really just primary, this is allyl, right? This is a carbon that's next to a double bond. So this will go through SN1. So this is unusual. So I want you to think of allyl as something that can definitely go through SN1. It could go through SN2 also, but if it's neutral, it's going to go through SN1. If it's negative, the oxygen, it would go through SN2. But here's how it works. The Br leaves, and you make a carbocation. And because that carbon that's positive is really not just primary, but it's next to a double bond, it has resonance stabilization, right? So this has resonance stabilization, which means that the double bond would go here, and the positive's on the left. So because allyl has this characteristic to it, it is very reactive. It's very good to do this. It's faster than tertiary, okay? So not always, but in this case it would be. So allyl is a very good position for a carbocation, and so therefore when the alcohol comes in, step two is minus H plus, we will get oxygen to attach on, like that, okay? So this is a SN1 favored reaction. Now again, if the alcohol that we were using was negative, if it was an alk oxide, RO minus, then SN2 would be favored, okay? So keep that in mind. So nucleophilic attacks occur when it's methyl primary SN2, even if it was ne uh, alcohol neutral SN2 because it's low degree, you don't want to make a carbocation that low. If it's high tertiary secondary and it's neutral oxygen, SN1. Now you might say, well, what happens if it's tertiary or secondary, and it's negative oxygen. Well, then that goes through E1. Okay, that's elimination. Let me review that with you. So, this is nucleophile. Now let's talk B.